the aftermath of the Battle of Wolf 359, starships from all over the galaxy have convened to send away teams to pick over the bones of the wreckages of Starfleet's fallen armada, and learn whatever secrets of both the Federation and the Borg can be found and kept safe. Starfleet's finest vessel, the USS Enterprise, helmed by Commander Riker, has hastened to the system to discover if any Borg weaknesses can be revealed. Star Trek Away Missions is a game for two players, with variants to add more with upcoming expansions. Players control competing away teams sent to the same wreckage to complete their mission and come away with the secrets they need to defeat the Borg or be assimilated. Each member of your away team will move about the board with an associated card that describes your strengths, skills, and other important characteristics to complete missions. The aim of the game is to score points by completing missions over the three game rounds. Each completed mission earns you points. Score the most points to win the game. After choosing their team, players must determine the layout of the wreckage they wish their away teams to explore by scanning the mission area. When players roll the dice to determine who places the first tile, pages 14 and 15 of the rulebook cover how the boards fit together to form the ruined spaceship. Once the board is confirmed, it's time to choose the core missions. Each player places their chosen core mission card beside their mission deck. This shows your overall mission for the game, and the extra score you will gain for achieving it. Now the away teams are ready to beam down to their target area. Both players roll a die to determine who will beam down first. The player with the highest result picks one of the mission boards as their first starting position. The other player then chooses two mission boards, with the first player taking the final mission board as their other starting area. Players then alternate placing their characters until all the away teams have been placed. The character cards are then primed with the pegs for attack, defense, skill, and move. The final part of the game preparation is to shuffle the support and mission decks and place them face down in the player area. The game then proceeds for three rounds, each round divided into two phases with four parts each. Draw phase. The first action in this phase is to discard any unwanted cards from your hand. In the first round, there won't be any unwanted cards, so this is skipped initially. Next, support cards are drawn into a hand of up to five. Repeat this with mission cards. If a player doesn't like the hand they've drawn, only in this first round, they can return any or all cards, reshuffle and redraw once. The final step of this phase is to clear the board. Players do this by clearing the activated tokens from characters, which is not necessary during the first round. Action Phase First, the player with fewer characters on the board takes bonus action tokens equal to the total difference in character numbers. Next, both players roll a die. The player with the higher roll will activate a character first. Once they have activated a character by taking two actions or using a bonus action token, the other player then activates one of theirs. This continues until all characters have been activated and bonus tokens used. Players only activate each of the characters once per action phase. Once a character has taken their actions, they have an activated token placed on their character board. Bonus actions can be taken instead of activating a character. The player can choose any character, including one that has already been activated, and perform a single action. The character does not gain an activated token. There are four actions a character can take. Move, attack, take cover, or a special action. They can do two of these per activation. Move action. Characters can move the number of squares indicated by the current rating on their character cards. They cannot move into a space that contains hostile characters or that is already occupied by two friendly characters. In this example, Riker is injured and so can only move two spaces, but using both of his actions to move can reach the operations terminal. Worf is in the armory and wants to get to the operations terminal on the bridge. He uses the turbo lifts, then two more spaces to get to the terminal in a total of four spaces. 
attack actions. When a character takes an attack action, they use one of the attack actions described on their card. Each of your characters have at least one attack action. They can gain additional attack actions with support cards. You can only use one attack action at a time, but you can choose a different attack action each time you take an attack action. The target of your attack action must be in line of sight, and you cannot target friendly characters. Roll the number of attack dice equal to the attacker's current attack rating, plus any additional dice granted by their attack action or weapons. Line up the dice, highest to lowest on the board. The opponent then rolls their defense dice, equal in number to their defense rating. Line up their dice, highest to lowest beside the attack dice on the dice board. Results are compared, and where the attacking dice is higher, the defender takes damage. Where they are equal, they cancel each other out, and where the attacker is lower than the defense, no damage is done. An unopposed attack dice can have two outcomes. Four and above inflicts damage, one to three does not. The results are added up to determine the level of damage along with any weapon modifiers, and the recipient takes that number of damage which is shown by removing that number of rating pegs. Players can discard from their hands to re-roll any or all dice in their pool. Players take turns starting with the attacker down the line. The new result always replaces the old. Take cover. If a player wants to take cover, they put a token on their character card and will then gain an additional dice should they be attacked by their opponent. If the character leaves the space they occupy, they discard the take cover token. Special Actions Some special actions on character, mission and support cards require characters to take a skill test to trigger their effects. The player rolls the number of die indicated on the character skill rating. Each at four or more is a success. No successes means the test is failed and the effect is not triggered. Some skill tests are opposed by other characters. The opposing player or challenger also then throws skill dice in the role of challenger and the results are lined up from highest to lowest on the dice board. Any challenger die that equals or beats a skill test die cancels it. Any other pairing is a success. Uncontested dice over four are seen as successful, and three and under fail. Uncontested challenger dice are ignored. As in combat, players can discard cards from their hand to reroll. Another option available to players is to draw cards. Instead of taking an action, they can draw a card from their support deck, discard a mission card from their deck and replace it, or they can pass and do nothing. Once all of the characters on the board have been activated and all bonus tokens have been used, the game moves on to the next round. Beam up and debrief. Once players have completed the three rounds, the game ends, and it's time to determine the winner. Add up the score of any end-of-game missions that you have in your hand that you have met the win conditions for, then check your core mission for points scored. Add the points from the mission cards and bonus points tokens in your scoring area, even if all of your away team are neutralized. The player with the highest point total is the winner of the game. If both players have the same points total, the away team that scored the most mission cards wins. If there is still a tie, the game is a draw. If you have two boxed sets or expansions to the game, there are three and four player variants in the rulebook inside the game. Also included are some handy tips, tricks and tactics to make the most out of each faction. Who will be the first to discover the secrets of the wreckage that could help win the war?